Season 2 of the Pat and JT Podcast. Oh my, now I'm here at last. The best time, always gonna be the best. Come on. Exclusively on the Parkville Network. Well, all right. um, he's a good human being. He enjoys food. He knows a lot about the culinary experience <laughs> in Omaha. Um, Dan Hoppin, host of Restaurant Hoppin, a Parkville Media production, yes, um, is in with us today on episode 32, second season of the Pat and JT podcast. Unbelievable. Welcome. I'm very happy to be here. Yes. Always am. This is always so much fun. Like you guys, I've been on two or three different times now, and every time it feels like we talk for like five minutes, and then it's like 35, and you're like, okay, we're done. <laughs> like, wait, we can talk more. Right, right. You guys want to keep going? It's only been there's five so minutes. So much more to talk about. Especially, so especially now. Well, it seems like there's a lot to talk about. A lot of angles, a lot of things going on. Yeah. You've been uh, having conversations with a lot of people in the restaurant industry about what's going on with the, the whole coronavirus mm-hmm. and, and people staying home, not going out to eat, some restaurants even closing their doors. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what, who have you been talking to and what have you been finding out? Anybody and everybody. And it's, it's really just, it's heartbreaking. I mean, some of the, some of the texts and the, uh, the Twitter messages and Facebook messages that I've gotten from, from really everyone in the industry, from chefs, from restaurateurs, from, you know, people who just, you know, work in the kitchen, who are hourly workers, who don't have health insurance. And, you know, all of a sudden they're not getting hours, so they can't pay bills like, you know, dishwashers and stuff. I've talked to, people who run bakeries where people are just canceling their orders or they're just not coming in anymore. And, you know, a very successful business at this time last yeah. week is now wondering how they're going to, you know, pay their rent you know, next month. It's, it's crazy. crazy. It's true. And there was one, um, I can't think of the rest of the name of it. Um, 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 it's uh, Kip Utter. Otter, or that was in with us. Remember they did boots on the ground, Jack and Mary's Jack and Mary's. Mm-hmm. Oh, and I saw a couple of his posts. Mm-hmm. They just and, closed. Yeah. And, and they're like, they were going to try and stay open because, but they had a lot of catering thing that got canceled. Mm-hmm. Understandably because mm-hmm. you can't have large groups. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then they can't have people in the restaurant and they were trying to continue with pickup or takeout delivery, but that just wasn't going to be enough. Well, and and that, when, their restaurant's been around forever. Yeah. I think we, we've seen a lot of restaurants, try to pivot to offer takeout or to go orders. And some of them just aren't used to that. Like some of them are fine dining restaurants or even like you mentioned a Jack and Mary's, they're not used to doing that. So that that's a struggle right there. Then you just have a lot fewer diners who are going out. Like people are starting to self quarantine themselves or be careful. And so they're just eating at home and there's just not enough business mm-hmm. to go around for these people. Yeah. You know, what's, what's, we were talking before we started recording is that just a week ago, you were in here recording episodes of Restaurant Hoppin' with chefs from some of the top restaurants in Omaha talking about how amazing it is and the, the success, their, their restaurant, maybe it's the first year, second year, third year of their restaurant being mm-hmm. around, and they're just so happy and doing so well. And then here we are a week and a half later, and they're closing down. Three weeks ago, the James Beard Award semifinalist came out, and Ben mm-hmm. Maids of All Courant is a semifinalist. Mm-hmm. Today, All Courant announced that it was closing its doors until further notice. Like that's insane. That says nothing about the quality of the restaurant Mm -mm. or the quality of the food. Like all Quran is one of the best restaurants there is not just in Omaha, anywhere that I've eaten. And like, that's what's happening right now. Places like that are closing and that's that's, like breaks my heart. That's like the story for so many small businesses. Yeah. Yeah. Cause small businesses, as they say, the first five years, are, you know, just, you just don't know. Mm -hmm. And, and trying to get over that hump where you, and even, even Jack and Mary's been Mm -hmm. around a long time. Mm -hmm. It's not every guarantee because Omaha is as supportive of restaurants as any city. Oh yeah. Without a doubt. And I'm sure that they want to, I mean, like today being St. Patrick's Day as we record this, I saw uh, two fine Irishmen and and several others, you know, call ahead. We'll have it. We'll run it out to the car for you. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, they, they've got their Take all the obstacles out of the way for you to get their food. <laughs> trying to do, helps for me. Yeah, but like you said, that's not their forte. Mm-hmm. You know, pick up delivery, whatever yeah. maybe, and and so they're they're trying to do whatever they can. But obviously today, all these places should be packed. Yeah, right on. Yeah, I mean, we're recording this on St. Patrick's Day, mm-hmm. and it's just a ghost town yeah. everywhere. It's mm-hmm. it's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and. So, you you look at restaurants like it's it's just it's such a tough industry to begin with like profit margins right. for the most part are 3 to 5% and that's when the market is operating perfectly mm-hmm. and now you you have so many fewer diners 
going out and everyone's scared and it's understandable. Like I, I just went to lunch um, at one of my favorite places and the owners, they're scared. And yeah. talk, they talk about, if happen. you don't mind, talk about that because you, we, you had them in on one of the episodes of restaurant hopping. It was block 16, yeah, which is sure. obviously one of your honks. You love that place. <laughs> yes. I follow them just for the pictures. Right. Oh my if gosh. I, even if I can't get in, it's, it's ah, crazy good. No. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I went to block 16 for lunch because a, I love block 16 and B, I, I wanted to support them in this time. Like I consider Jess and Paul urban, my friends. And I was like, let's get out. I can maybe, you know, tweet out some pictures, try and get more people in there. So everything about the process was really, really nice. Like I called and really safe. I called ahead and placed an order. I was in and out of the restaurant within three or four minutes was not in close contact with anyone. So very, very safe. I think about as safe as you could be for a restaurant, but it was just eerie being in there because this is a restaurant that for lunch on a weekday is packed. You're in line. Yes, and no one no one was dining in there. I don't think they were even allowing diners in Probably at not. the time. People can just pick up stuff to go, but like they had pieces of blue masking tape on the ground for where you could stand in line because they don't want people, you know, standing too mm-hmm. close to each other. And, and probably they, to give people a, a good idea. You know, yeah. it's like, "Here, we're mm-hmm. going to help you out so you can Follow keep yourselves." Line. Yeah. 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 And they're just hand sanitizing stations everywhere. They're like all the employees are constantly pumping those things and, and washing their hands. And it, it was just, it was so surreal to see a restaurant that is normally so bustling and one of the most successful and well-regarded in Omaha to just, and it wasn't a ghost town. There were still people there and everything, but it was nothing like yeah. the normal block 16 experience. And we're looking at what another two or three months at possibly. least. Yeah. Um, Which some, I would, I would yeah. assume, like you said, I mean, it's I mean, June, July, two probably. months would be devastating. I mean, how many of these restaurants mm-hmm. that, like you said, a week ago, two weeks ago, were some of the best in the region could be shuttered forever. Yeah. I mean, they, they, in, realistically in six weeks, eight weeks, if people aren't allowed to go back and eat in the restaurant, they could go away because yeah, and then the waste staff on top of it, right? You know, because they're they're obviously going to have to go find something else. I mean, that's that goes without saying because they can't wait. Yeah, <laughs> and they're mm-hmm. not, you know, so At there two are bucks no an tips, hour or whatever right? they normally make, right? Yeah, so there are, there are no tips for them, and and I know that the suggestion of Benny, you know, buy gift cards, and there are some restaurants that I've read about uh, people buying gift cards. They're going to go ahead and take a percentage and and split it up as in tips mm-hmm. so to speak for their wait staff to keep everybody afloat as best they can buy the buy the cards now you can come eat later um but that's just going to be hard to yeah be hard to do i mean obviously it it helps to buy gift cards it helps to buy merchandise those are ways that you can support these restaurants from afar but I mean, obviously, well, people aren't going to buy yeah, enough yeah. gift cards to s- That's support just a restaurant because a lot time. of people that go, some of their jobs are shut. Yeah, you know, yeah, so same thing. They're not going out to eat, mm-hmm. you know, which which is another problem is like uh, the the grocery stores staying open and they're ones that they have to, they've got to stay open, limited hours, but at least most of them have turned that corner of the uh, curbside mm-hmm. and, and bringing the groceries out to your car, which is a huge thing because you imagine that wasn't real common five years ago Mm-mm, it was all, starting yeah. but you know the delivery service that whole deal but being able to just pull up have one person come out they put your groceries in you don't have to talk to anybody else or get near anybody even, <sighs> right yeah. yeah right they go to your trunk or the back of your car and you're out of there so you can get get food but it's still it's just you know that that's huge but my goodness for a lot of people ordering food is going to be tough period just going to the grocery store because it's going to get a little bit tight yeah no doubt about it. That is something that in Omaha in general too, are you hearing any other restaurants right now that are, I mean, like Paisans was one of them. He's a verse day whenever we have uh, Matt verse all in mm-hmm. and they're doing pickup and they do have some delivery. Um, they even have the drive through window. Yeah. I think yeah, I didn't even know that. I was like, where'd they put a window? I didn't know there was a window down there, but apparently there's a drive through and he's still trying to maintain um, as of this point, his Wednesdays are the days that they, they give back to different charities. Mm-hmm. And, and organizations. So God bless him, you know, um, yeah. trying to help them too. Yeah. I think at this point, pretty much every Omaha restaurant is they've pretty much closed their dining area and they're taking to go right. orders or pick up orders. But, you know, kind of like I mentioned earlier, I think a lot of restaurants are trying that and either 
they're realizing that it's not feasible for their business or they're not getting enough business to continue doing that. Because I've seen several, even just in the past 24 hours, you know, they announce, okay, we're going to, we're going to start taking to go orders. And then within 24 hours, they're like, yeah, we're, we're just, we're we're closing for right now. I mean, you know, the, you know, some of these guys, like the guys from block 16, if it's six, eight weeks and like you said, to to go orders that aren't going to sustain them long term. So it's three, four weeks from now. Mm -hmm. Do they stop? production of anything and hopefully they come back in two months i mean or do they well they do, do they go the away in the fridge you know what i mean it's like right what do they do you know it's because because it, things kind of turned fast well that's you know? a, that's actually something that's kind of cool and um i'm having a guest on later this afternoon that i'm really excited to talk to talk about with this but i i talked with him earlier this morning and, and he's working with some of these restaurants that have closed down and they have a food surplus right now. So they're kind of banding together and finding ways that they can donate that to, to food banks or to the open door mission or, you know, to homeless shelters. So that's kind of been a cool part of this whole process. Obviously there's no silver lining to restaurants closing or people losing their jobs, but at least that food is going to a good place and people are trying to, Make help others yeah make the best of a terrible situation yeah that's just crazy yeah because then then the the, the chain <clears throat> excuse me if you've got the domino effect so if they're there you got people who can't afford to go out because they're not working so the restaurants can't stay open because nobody's coming in so then whoever they're leasing their restaurant space from because the majority of them don't own their property mm-hmm. um, is also going to feel the effect and it's just going to keep going yeah keep going and keep going and so nobody's going to be immune to that. Pretty soon you're going kind to be too far into it where too. it's going to be too late for anybody to come back. It's going to be too late for the It'd restaurants to come over. back. Yeah, they'd have to start all the way over that's again. That's where the government's working on the packages right now. I hope that, so. That's what it's going to come Huge. down to is yeah. how much can the government help and what can they do? It, it's going to be hard for them as well because I know, it, you know it's like like they said, you know, state by state, each state's different and get hits for a different reason mm-hmm. because they have different tourism Pulls, different attractions, mm-hmm. uh, different things sustaining them. And so, you know, you get the places like the Floridas that have the the parks, uh, say like Disney World, you know, that's another one. It's a ghost town right now. I saw Crazy. pictures of that on Instagram. Is yesterday. that creepy? Yes. It's yeah. so weird. It is weird. Yes. P- pictures of Times Square. Creepy. Empty. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's eerie. It is very eerie. It's going to be, and, and once everything they said, well, like you're seeing right now in China. Mm-hmm. the emergency hospitals have been cleared mm-hmm. and they're getting things back up and running again. So we're still heading into that, you know, working towards that, but mm-hmm. it's going to be a rough go. Yeah. The thing that's really scary. I think I, I saw this two days ago. I think I follow a guy on Twitter. Who's a, who's a barbecue writer in New York city. And two weeks ago he was in Italy so like when all this was just starting just in Italy, about there. yeah, but before it w- mm. before it like got real and he was, he took pictures and video and he shared them on Twitter and it was just, you know, people were just walking around. It was just a sunny day and everyone was just treating it like it was totally normal, just like we were doing here four yeah. or five days ago. Right. And now they're in complete quarantine. Like no one can go out and do anything. So I hope that's not what well, happens here, right. but it was just though, kind of eerie to think about. It is. It is. Their, their situation's a little different uh, demographically Yes, that's because true. a lot of younger kids lived with, live with generation generationally. They'll have three or maybe even four generations in a house. Mm -hmm. And that's where, like here, I know for a lot of people, it's been difficult. I've heard people talking already about their parents. Mm -hmm. Uh, Maybe they're older or they have parents that are people in their family, maybe that are in a nursing home or another facility. And they're telling people, no, don't come right now. You can call. Mm -hmm. And there was even a picture of a guy who goes to visit his dad. And since this has started, he, and they're, they're down South at someplace fairly decently as far as decent as far as weather goes, but he sits outside his dad's window and they're both on the phone. Oh, that's awesome. He can go see him and that they still talk (laughs) through the window, but it's like for his safety, you know, not going to come in because you just don't know. Well, and now did 10 years ago, this wouldn't, this would have been really bad, but you could just FaceTime people. Mm -hmm. You know, if you really need that contact, just FaceTime them. They're right there. As long as you're, as long as they are, they had the technology. Yeah. Because well, yeah, like exactly. my parents well, just got their smartphones. They just did. And they're both right around 80. You know, and so it's like they're doing really well with it. And they can text. 
They've sent pictures, yeah, but we haven't done anything beyond that. Uh-huh. You know, we haven't really gotten still that next working step. On it. And they do have, uh, you know, like maybe now would be a good time to think about getting something like that where you can have, I think they have like the grand pads and which are actually just tablets that are meant only for communication yeah. between you can set it mm-hmm. up so you mm-hmm. can contact them. Mm-hmm. Or have them even, even do, because they're Androids, right? Yes. Yeah. Google, Google Hangouts would be perfect. You could. You, they you don't could, have you any could, of that You stuff, could yeah. conference your mom and dad and you together. It's just like a, have a party. Uh, we'll wait another week. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, <laughs> not, it's not that bad yet. <laughs> we're still in spring break right, right now. Right. We're okay. still. <laughs> how about speaking of spring break, how about those beaches in Florida packed with oh people? Crazy. Gosh. Absolute Unbelievable. Idiots. Unbelievable. Or like, I, I saw a tweet yesterday where, uh, you know, schools are like going to all remote, you know, learning yeah. right now. And so the, <clears> some students at Colorado because they don't have to go to class, took that as an opportunity to go out and party for St. Patrick's Day instead. And they're like these huge gatherings. And it's just what like, are you, guys doing? you idiots. Total idiots. <laughs> Get away from each yeah. other. This is how it spreads. And that that's the thing too. I think a lot of uh, the younger, because the younger generation in particular aren't seeing the numbers getting sick, mm-hmm. but they're carriers. Mm-hmm. That exactly. They're, that they're not realizing, oh, that's mm-hmm. why you don't want me to go see grandma and grandpa. That's why we don't want you to go see grandma and grandpa. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's, it's a lot of things that, and it's hard because it's not tangible. Mm-hmm. So you're telling them, well, we're not going to have school because we don't want you to get sick. And it's like day off. Yeah. Even tangible Party. stuff for those kids don't still don't get it. Yeah. They just still don't. It's, it's going to be rough, but they, they, they feel invincible. They a hundred percent. Yeah. And they don't understand. Yeah. Trying to keep my son from going to urban freaking air last night with his buddies. I'm like, not, not a chance. <laughs> oh my God. Are you going to urban air? No. What? Why? <laughs> no. You're not going to urban air. You're in lockdown. (laughs) Trust me, that pains me more than it pains you to tell you that. Uh But you have to stay home. Normally, I want you out of here as much as possible. (laughs) Go go to work, go to whatever, but you've got to stay home. It's not going to happen. No. Um, Let's see. What were some other things, too, I was going to ask you? Oh, I know one thing. You mentioned the hand sanitizers. And this came up in a conversation with a friend of ours. um, And it was talking about... I like your glasses, by the way. Those new. They're blue. They're older, but I just dug them out. Nice. Because the other ones, I think, are under the bed. TBT. Um, So... (laughs) TBT to your blue glasses. Well, thank you very much. Yes. They were the ones I could find. I was like, where'd Mike? Because I wore them to bed. They're fancy. And then the morning I wake up and I'm like, where's my... Oh, they probably fell off. And they would, they're probably behind. Did we get a new client or something? You can afford to get new glasses? No, the they're just the old ones I dug out of the okay. bottom <laughs> bottom drawer. Um, but some of you, and one of the things going around is talking about um, some of the hand sanitizers because they're antibacterial. And it's like, well, wait, that's not going to kill a virus. Mm-hmm. Antibacterial is not killing the virus. So you got to make sure you get the hand sanitizers that are alcohol-based because mm-hmm. that's what kills. Or not, it doesn't kill all viruses. It doesn't it kill all bacteria, but it is more likely to to sanitize your hands. But the best thing, according to WHO, the WHO organization, right? And um, not the CDC. I mean, CDC, yes, not the FDA, the CDC, is just soap and water. Yeah. And it doesn't have, not antibacterial soap, just regular soap and water, warm water, doesn't have to be hot. You can just, you know, but just washing your hands. My hands are so like cracked and dry yeah, out because I'm just washing my hands all the you time and they're so dry. You, like, like the moisturizing yeah, soap yeah. To, to use because you're going to be washing your hands more. And mine, mine, I have a propensity for eczema mm, and on my mm-hmm. hands in particular. So washing my hands is like a big no-no, but I don't like using the sanitizer because it's alcohol. Right. It's alcohol based. And so it, it, it just dries. <sighs> just dries everything out so finding that that nice in between just a plain soap that's moisturizing do you do the happy birthday three times though no. i'm in and out in like five seconds i know it's it's not the right thing um, to okay, do but i just can't funny. i can't do the I, <laughs> happy birthday to me blah, 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 and i'm done who were we watching it. they were talking about you know you had to wash the tops of your hands and in between i think it was dr oz was doing a demonstration mm, like this and he happened. was getting so much flack for it because he was going in it was basically full-on surgery scrub Right. And it's like, okay, you don't need to really probably scrub the backside so much. It's more your hands and each finger. Just kind of, just just to, to get them all. But yeah, probably 20 seconds isn't a lot, Pat. Happy you know birthday to <laughs> <Trust> me. <laughs> 20 seconds is an eternity. <laughs> when you're actually like, and, and I have I have adhered to that, but like yeah. 20 seconds sounds like nothing. But when you're actually doing it and you're sitting there at, at the sink gosh, counting, gosh. you're just like, oh my gosh. Washing your hands eight? or waiting something to, for it to warm up in the microwave yeah. for 20 seconds. Oh, the worst. It's forever. Yes. Can I do 15? Right? 15 will be fine. And I've, I've even like 20 seconds on the timer and you pull it at 17. <laughs> yeah, I can't, do it. No. <laughs> can't do it anymore, can't man. Wait. Not going to wait three more. Can't do it. But that's, that's something just to take away for people is that when you see the rush for Purell, Purell Mm-hmm. which Purell actually got in trouble with the FDA because they were making claims about all the germs that they could 
uh, guard mm-hmm. against. Mm-hmm. They're like, okay, you know what? You aren't actually tested. Yeah. So you don't get to make that distinction. And people freaking out because they can't find it. You've seen it in the grocery stores. There's nothing left. Zero. You can make your own mm-hmm. with, very simple, is with some aloe vera gel. And rubbing, and rubbing alcohol. alcohol. I just heard that on the mm-hmm. way over here. Try finding rubbing some. alcohol though. There's none at Walmart. There was none at Hy-Vee yesterday. I have a bunch of it and I don't know why. <laughs> it's well, one of those things. It's like I have like four containers of salt. You it's like I, every once in a while I can't find salt. And so I buy another container more You are salt. that rubbing alcohol and pimp. So I have all this <laughs> rubbing alcohol. I don't know why. Um, but I made it's a two thirds of a cup of rubbing alcohol and a third of a cup of uh, aloe vera gel. Mm-hmm. And then you can add some essential oil if you want fragrance or for other medicinal properties depending on your beliefs um but made some and i have some here with me as a matter yeah, of fact i appreciate you sharing that hoarding in your yet. office <laughs> <laughs> but i've got it of all people you were the one that i'm surprised hasn't already made a vat i know i mean I seriously have. you probably well you've been looking we, for the rubbing alcohol there's no rubbing alcohol that's funny yeah but yeah you can make your own but just make sure it's at least 60 percent alcohol because and they say well if a 60 is good wouldn't 90 or 100 be better yeah you would think but all that does is just it evaporates so fast mm. and it dries your skin so mm-hmm. fast too. Yeah. So that 60%, 70% is that, kind of... That's I think, a sweet range. Yeah. I think Purell is 70%. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that that's the key to it is that it's got the alcohol base. Okay. I'll remember but, that. Yeah. Antibacterial, probably not so much unless it's alcohol based. Okay. Something just to think about. All right. So I did, I grabbed that because I was like, you know what? That's a good point because he said, yeah. yeah, those antibacterials, that's not going to do you anything Mm-mm. yeah good point it's a virus that, so uh uh i was gonna ask you something dan about restaurants again oh restaurant hopping your podcast so yes. what are the plan what are your plans for for i mean with everything going on you know your last episode that you released earlier this week talked about this the, the situation mm-hmm. basically a little bit more in depth um but what, what are your plans for it well there, there are kind of two routes that i want to go um one is i would love to have Chef, more chefs and restaurateurs on during this time, if we're not in lockdown or quarantine or anything, because I think we are going to come out of this eventually. Yes. And hopefully restaurants are going to be able to reopen. And when that happens, I want people to be excited about places. So like if they listen to, you know, um, an episode where I interview a chef from a certain restaurant, they say, Oh, that sounds so good. I really want to try that. They make it, they make a note of that. And then when the restaurants reopen, they actually go out and visit. That is what I would like to do. Taking the human element of it, taking the human element into it, excuse me, I can understand like these people are really hurting. They might not want to come on a podcast right now and talk. So I'm, we'll I'm, see. We'll see if they do. If they do, I will keep these mics. I'm optimistic. I will that. keep these mics yeah. open. I would absolutely yeah. love that. Um, in the spare time, I'm also going to be doing this thing and it comes from something my wife and Sarah and I do. We have this thing in my phone called the list where we have a list of restaurants where we're like, these are the places we want to visit. We have them in a certain order of like, okay, these are at the top. This is where we need to visit within the next two weeks. This is in the next month, yada, yada. So what I want to do is I want to do a series of shorter podcasts that, to help people develop their own personal lists. That's a good idea. When, yeah, great idea. when this is over, when restaurants open back up. So like, I have an episode where it's like, here's five pizza places that I think you need to try. Here's five fine dining places. Here's five uh, Mexican places that I absolutely love. Awesome idea. And hopefully during this period, even if restaurants are closed and people can't go out and actually get the food now, they can make their own list in their phone where they say, okay, that sounds awesome. That's going to the top of my list. And then this all opens back up. Restaurants open. Boom. Hopefully we're getting instant business back out. It's a great idea. Twofold. Number one, a lot of people fall into um, habits and patterns and ruts, if you want to even call it that. And they go to the same places all the time. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then when it comes down to that last minute, you're like, well, where do you want to go eat? You automatically default. Yeah. To the rut. Right. Mm -hmm. And so to have some new places to pull from and say, okay, let's, let's, what's next on the list. Let's go there. That's awesome. The other one too, when you're talking about the fact that right now, some of these places are probably looking at a dark time. And it's going to be, you know, for some of them, they're going to shut their doors for a while. This is a great time to get to know them. So not only are people going to be aware of the restaurant, but you're going to get, get a chance to kind of do a deep dive with some of these people and find out their story and, and find out more about them. Because obviously when you go to a restaurant, one of the neatest things I always think of is back in the day when blue first opened and Tom was always there Mm -hmm. and he would come out and it just felt, it is like we knew him. 
And he would always just, and, and for the best ones, the best chefs mm -hmm. that are behind the scenes, they come out mm -hmm. and they make contact with people. Yeah. And, and you feel like, once you feel like there's some, some familiarity there, it's like all of a sudden, okay, now that's my team. That, yeah. that's, yeah. this is the, right. you know, and you, you have, and you have such a connection with food anyway, I mean, especially for these chefs that you've had on that the, their food and their menu is like their, their kids. Oh, so yeah. they want to introduce the world to their kids. So when people can't go see their kids, they want to talk about their kids. They want to talk about what they created. So I think Joel's right. I think they're going to, I think they're going to want to talk to about, and talk about their story and talk about how, how bad it is right now and how they're going to come out on the other side. And then the, really and, and go back farther and yeah. you know, just how'd you get started? You know, what, where's this passion for food come mm -hmm. from? I think that's going to be, that's going to be really valuable to a lot of people when they see these places open, they see a name and go, that's that guy. Well, who's but, the guy at the hunger block? Uh, Carlos Mendez. Carlos yes. Mendez last week when you had he him on amazing. and he, I mean, uh, three or four times got emotional He's, during his podcast, telling this, up. Be yeah. talking about how his his food, Venezuela, right? Was it Venezuela? Yes. That his food that he has on his menu reminds him so much of his childhood. It's like he got emotional. Like this is my, so this, I'm serving you my childhood, and yeah. that's how important it is for these people that run these restaurants. Telling their story through their food. That, yeah, that has been my favorite part of doing the restaurant hopping podcast so far is really humanizing restaurants yeah. and helping people. Like you know, conceptually, that there's someone behind the counter or behind the wall who's cooking your food, but you don't really think about it. You just, you go in, you order, and mm -hmm. then food comes out, you eat it, you leave. You don't think about the people right. who are actually making it, who are conceptualizing the food, who are making it, who are washing your dishes, doing all that. I, what I've loved about this is that I have kind of gotten a chance to put some faces in front of people or maybe some voices in front of people. This is an well, audio. There's but, stories because yeah, yeah. for a lot of some, for not a lot of people, for some people going to a new place can be intimidating too, mm -hmm. especially if it's a cuisine they're not familiar with mm -hmm. and they don't know either know how to order or they don't know, you know what to expect when they walk in the restaurant, but having that spelled out to them and they can visualize it when they're listening to what this person is hoping they experience, whoever the chef or whatever person you're talking to, and what the questions that you're asking, kind of finding out, it, it almost gives them an experience of walking into the restaurant. So the first time they walk in, it's not so overwhelming because mm -hmm. you want them to enjoy it and not just kind of like, you know, like I said, for some people, they get a little tongue tied, so to speak. It's like, I don't know what to order. Yeah. I don't even know what this is. Well, you're, you know, no, you're, uh, you're, you go in there with right? the information, especially I yeah. go back to, um, well, who we were just talking, Carlos? Hunger Ball, yeah, Carlos. Yeah, and you, if you go in knowing the story behind the the dish yes. on the menu that he has, that he knew that he's making that because his grandma used to feed him this when he was growing up, you go in there and you order that and you kind of, you can experience what that chef has experienced growing up. It's like a, it's it's like the fourth wall in a movie, you yeah. know, when they, the actors turn to the camera and talk to you. It's like you're breaking down that fourth wall because you know so much more about what you're eating. It like it adds another yeah. layer to your experience. Absolutely. I will never forget when I had um, the chefs and owners from Kitchen Table, and Colin Duggan is is one of them. And I asked him to break down. They have this sandwich called the Whole Bird, which uses several different parts of a chicken, and it's the best chicken sandwich I've ever had. But I basically, I asked him to describe it and he spent like four minutes breaking down like every detail. It was like <laughs> chicken awesome. sandwich poetry. It was amazing. Chicken sandwich porn and is it, what it was. Cause I was, yeah, here, basically. I was starving after he got done. It was awful. And you're I, going beef. What beef? What beef? Forget I that. want more chicken. And, and, and I was just like, if anyone it like lives within six miles of kitchen table and doesn't want to go there and have that right now. Yes. I don't, yeah. something's wrong with what you. What more can I do? Yeah. Right? <laughs> we need smell there. a vision. That's oh what we need. Gosh. Obviously the next step. Well, that's awesome. I think that's great. Cause it, that's, that's a good way to, again, make the best of a bad situation mm -hmm. um, and taking this opportunity out of what is for a lot of people, a crisis mm -hmm. and maybe turn it into a good opportunity for, for, for you, for your listeners to get to know some of these people and know more behind, behind the name of the restaurant. Cause a lot of these restaurants, they're family owned. Mm -hmm. um, almost all of them that you're talking to. Oh yeah, for sure. They're yeah. family owned. This is right here. I mean, Omaha has just got such a diverse table that's set. And, and to think of all the small families and small family restaurants, I should say, that are going to be hit hard by this. Mm -hmm. and, my, and my whole thing has always been like, I've had some people like call me a food critic or even a food mm -hmm. reviewer. And I really like push that label away. I'm more of, I see myself as an Omaha food promoter. 
I want to promote businesses and help people find awesome meals. Like that, that's what I consider my job. And, and I've always thought that that was important. It's important now more than ever. Or, I think you've, you've definitely carved out, so to speak. I've tried. You, you have. <laughs> yeah, you because have. when I think of when we first started working with you and what you were doing at the time, you had an extensive blog. And you'd been not not critics. It was never a critique. It was always a, a promoter. Is a great word and yeah. a promoter. Yeah, it was and, really and weren't word. using that word at the time. Mm-hmm. But you were you were promoting what they were doing and you were reviewing what they did, and never with the intent to knock anybody down. No, always wanting to make sure that your experience was the best it could be. So they always had a chance to shine. I've gotten feedback before from friends and from people on social media that are like, you know, we we love your reviews. We love what you write, but man, you're just so positive. Like it would, it would make it a little more real if you would say some bad stuff. And I'm just like, well, not every restaurant experience is perfect, but I don't want to highlight the bad stuff. I want to highlight, here's what's good about the restaurant. Here's another great restaurant. Yeah. Here's what you can appreciate. I'm not going to tell you about the dish that you shouldn't order. I'm going to say, go and get this dish because it's amazing. It makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah. And I think, and I think that's why a lot of chefs and restaurateurs before this whole thing happened, I was it was getting to the point with this podcast where they were starting to ask me to come on rather than me asking them because I think they realize that, that I want to be an advocate for them. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's going to be really important in the coming months and something I need to think more about and try and put some strategy behind really. Excellent. Now, when does your next episode come? Every Thursday. Every Thursday. So it'll be today, actually. To be, this, will, this is dropping on Thursday. Speak, this so is, today, yeah. That's right. I forgot today is Wednesday. Yeah. Is today Wednesday? Today's Tuesday, but this will be on Wednesday. This will be Thursday's this is on episode. Wednesday. This yeah. is Thursday. Po- I'm sorry. Pe- podcast time okay. is terrible. <laughs> the, <laughs> yeah. Yesterday was Rihanna. Tomorrow, today that's is right. Dan. Got it. Thursday, yes. Thursday is Dan. A new episode today. Um, so Chances can, are I'll edit all that out. God, I hope so. Chances are. I Well, hopefully. If I remember. Fingers crossed. And so they can they can get a hold of that. They can check your blog. Check it. Where else can they find you? Um, restauranthoppin.com. Like you mentioned, just at Dan Hoppin on Twitter. Um, yeah, that's about it. We're just about pr- it? We're, we're proud of what you're doing yes, with Restaurant are. Hoppin and your blog and everything. So, um, And what you do for the restaurant community. How much community. has grown? It's just crazy. It is. You guys are the ones who made uh, it all possible. None of, none of this happens without you. We couldn't do it without, without, you. without your stuff. You without bring your content. content. We could do Restaurant Hoppin, but it would be terrible. Be bad. <laughs> Oh, I didn't mean to push that. I fired I was that say, off. Are we done? No, we got, we, we got all kinds of editing going on in this one. I'm not going to edit that out because that yeah. was my fault. Yeah. Dan, Dan, you're the man. Thank you so much. And I, I look forward to many more episodes. And hopefully we get this thing, fingers crossed. I think I think in a couple prayers, months yeah. where it's going to come back and it's going to be a boom. Like the restaurant community is going to, it's going to be thriving again. And people are going to be so excited to just get out of their houses and go out and be social again. Yeah, it's going to be so. insane. I yeah. hope so. Yeah. So let's just get through this next couple of weeks, months, whatever. Months. Fingers, yeah. months. Fingers okay. crossed. There you right, go. Dan, better Thanks, yet. Buddy. Prayers up. Couple prayers, prayers up. More, more important. Mm-hmm. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Uh, Thank it's you. Pat and JT. It's Pat and JT. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at 402-403-9478. Thanks for listening. Thank you.